What's up guys, Tyrai521 back for another LEGO custom painted minifigure showcase, and in this one we have my LEGO Spider-Man 2 custom painted minifigures. Um, in this showcase we've only got two figures, it's a little bit of a short one, we've got Spider-Man and Doc Ock, the central hero and central villain of the film. Um, I recently went back and rewatched the Raimi trilogy, um, because I've been kind of going on a Spider-Man kick lately. Um, you know, I, I saw Spider-Verse recently, and I've been playing a lot of Spider-Man PS4, and, um, I just figured, you know, I haven't watched these movies, what I would consider one of my favorite superhero, uh, franchises. I haven't watched them since, like, 2016, so I went back and rewatched the trilogy. They all still hold up for the most part, there's, you know, little nitpicks and whatnot that I found that I hadn't had before, you know, um, in the past, you know, I wanted to kind of go rewatch them without the nostalgia goggles on. But I'm happy to say that for the most part, they all still hold up fairly well. And I do believe that Spider-Man 2 is one of, if not the best uh, Spider or the best superhero film ever made. You can make an argument. I think The Dark Knight is probably a better made film. And overall, you know, it is just, you know, it's on another level. But the Dark Knight trilogy is more of a, um, I consider those more crime drama films than superhero movies. So my original statement still stands, uh, Spider-Man 2 is probably the greatest superhero film ever made. Because it just, it, not only is it, they made the smart option of making it more of a character study than a, uh, superhero movie. They gave equal balance, or they give equal screen time to Peter Parker, as well as Spider-Man. And they do a great job of showcasing just how hard it is to balance both of those lifestyles. You know, you've got, you've got, you know, the people being, you know, rallying behind Spider-Man, but then you've got everybody in his personal life constantly being disappointed by his actions. He can never please them. And it really does a great job of showing just how much of a toll that takes on his mental state and how all that stress eventually leads to him, you know, losing his powers. Um, and then, of course, you know, he has the whole redemption arc, he has to regain them, you know, to fight the, you know, to fight Doc Ock, to, you know, save the city of New York in the end. And it's a really great film, it's one of, like I said, probably the better, one of the best, uh, superhero movies I think that's come out. I don't, I think there's a level of heart present in it that is lacking from, um, from certain superhero movies that come out today that, you know, there's a, an element of heart to it that gives it that extra push into, from being a good movie to a great movie. There's incredible scenes, there's the train scene, which might be my favorite uh, action scene of all time. And there's the beautiful shot afterwards of all the New Yorkers passing Spider-Man up to the front of the train in a very Jesus-like pose, you know, very metaphorical. Um, and then there's just, there's the hilarious, uh, there's some really funny moments, you know, there's of course the whole pizza time scene at the beginning, there's the raindrops keep falling on my head montage, there's the beautiful scene of him in the car with Uncle Ben, one of my favorite, um, just emotional scenes in a movie. And yeah, just a, such a great movie, one of the most nostalgic movies for me, and probably, like I said, my favorite superhero film. So I decided to revamp this old project that I started a long time ago, um, these figures were like were like something that I started working on back in like 2017. I figured, you know, I was really hyped up after rewatching the movies, so I'd remake or so I'd uh, restart these guys. Um, I started them not not from scratch. I started Spider-Man mainly from scratch, but Doc Ock I kind of just continued my old design of him. Uh, but yeah, without further ado, let's jump right into the figures. So first up, of course, we have the man himself, Spider-Man, uh, but of course portrayed by Tobey Maguire in the films. Um, I've always been, um, you know, nostalgia's always kind of, you know, made me um, have a slight preference for Tobey Maguire. You know, you can make the argument Tom Holland is, uh, you know, obviously more accurate and is a better age for the role, but nostalgic reasons, I'll always, um, I'll always appreciate Tobey Maguire's portrayal of the character. So moving on to the figure, he is a very, very uh, time-consuming figure to make, or he was, and like I said, is, um, improper grammar alert. <laughs> but um, he actually started out as a plain red figure. Yeah, everything on this guy was just plain red when I started him. Painted all the blue on, I painted all the silver webbing on, I painted the eyes on, everything was done by me. And that's why I'm particularly fond of this figure. I, you guys know I'm not, or maybe you don't know, but for those that don't know, I am not very good at doing lines, or doing very straight lines, or lines that um, that you have you know equal symmetry on both sides. So I really tried my best to get this guy to look good. Um, you know, a lot of superhero customizers have to frequently, you know, do sym symmetrical lines. So they're a lot better at it than I am. Uh, but like I said, I did try my best, and I hope it looks good. Um, so just kind of starting off with the figure, as you can see, he's got, you know, some different, uh, dark blue elements kind of painted onto the pants right here, and then on the sides, and then on his arms. 
the webbing just kind of goes up his feet. Um, I tried to do a decent amount of webbing. Um, I wanted to do... I wanted to not put too much on there. I kind of wanted it to, you know, fit the scale of the Lego figure. So that's why there's maybe only, like, you know, one or two lines going across here and then two going down, you know, because I wanted to spread it out and then make it more, you know, so it fits the scale of the figure. So, you know, I'm not packing, like, tons and tons of webbing detail that may be accurate to the real suit but doesn't quite fit the scale of Lego. Um, I maybe went, I maybe made the lines a little bit too far, or too few and far in between on the, um, the chest right here, as you can tell. I only did, you know, there's a little bit maybe too much, too many gaps in between the lines. I probably could have done, like, one or two more lines on each, you know, going up and across. Um, but overall, I think it looks pretty good. Um, I think I did, like, yeah, like, five going across and, like, five or six going down. Um, I kind of had it, I kind of had them like angling down on this side, and then I kind of had them, you know, do more of like an arch, uh, when it gets to the top of the suit. Um, the spider is maybe a little too fat, but I think the leg shaping looks pretty good, um, despite, you know, the, despite the, the weird or the, the thickness of the spider. Let me kind of turn to the side, maybe if I can focus on it, you guys can see it a little bit clearer. Um, the mask, like I said, I completely started from scratch on that. I scraped off all, or I uh, erased off, rubbed off all of the uh, printing on there, painted the eyes, and then kind of did the webbing around it. Um, I'm pretty happy with the um, with the shaping of the eyes, and I think the webbing, while it could be a little bit improved, looks pretty decent overall. You can just see some more of the the webbing detailing. I lift up his arm on the side of the torso, and that kind of goes even onto the shoulder area, and then on, down onto the feet down there. And then the arm detailing, or the painting on the arm, it's going blurry, there we go. You see the detailing on the arm, just continuation of the uh, the webbing. Um, it's all pretty self-explanatory, I don't know why I'm still talking, it's just webbing and then blue details. If you go onto the back, as you can see the continuation of the the blue onto the legs, as well as the, the webbing on the feet. And you can kind of see, yep, they started off as red legs, kind of proving what I was saying earlier about how this started off as a plain red figure. You can see the continuation of the webbing on the, the torso, as well as the the spider. I don't know how well it's showing up on camera, but I kind of painted that on there to the best of my ability. Um, I really tried my best to to get it to look like the shape that it, look, that it has in the movie, but um, painting on spiders is just, you know, all those little tiny lines. It was a little bit of an intricate process, but I did try my best, and I hope it does look good. Uh, this side is just the same as the other side. You can see, you know, more of the continuation of the webbing on his legs, on the side of the torso, as well as the detail on this arm. I try my best to match the other arm. You know, I think I mostly succeeded. Um, then if we just take another look at the head, as you can see, you guys already saw the eyes. You can just see I continue the webbing all the way around. Some of the lines look maybe a little too thick, some of them look a little maybe too thin. But overall, I am very, very happy with how that looks. Much better than my Homecoming Spider-Man I made a few years ago, where all the lines were all blotchy, and... Uh, yeah, this figure actually started out as a remake of that Homecoming suit. I kind of scraped all the paint off with the intention of making a, uh, of making a Raimi Spider-Man. Um, and then I actually just kind of scrapped some of the pieces, and then just, I think, kept the head and the arms and hands. And, um, just turned it into the Raimi suit Spider-Man. Um, so for those that are wondering, the homecoming suit that I made a few years ago does not exist anymore, as I have the official Lego figure, and I don't really need a custom of it. Um, and then I didn't paint the hands as well, because paint just rubs off on hands, and unless it's a special occasion where, like, a hand detail is crucial, I do not paint the hands. So, there is my Raimi suit Spider-Man. Let's move on to Doc Ock. So next up, of course, we have Doc Ock, who is portrayed brilliantly by Alfred Molina, one of the best superhero villains I think ever put to screen. Um, he's a great actor, and I think he really brought some needed humanity to this character. I love the way that they kind of remixed his whole storyline in, in this movie. Could be the same as the comics, but from what I understand, I'm pretty sure it's different. I don't really know. I've never read the comics, or at least not in over a decade. Um, but yeah, I really like the, the take that they had with this character in this movie. Um, so I kind of, um, I used a Harry Potter face for him, we'll just kind of start with the head and hair. Actually, Harry Potter face and hair. Um, the hair I painted brown, of course. I thought about using the new Han Solo hair, because he kind of does have the similar wavy texture. Um, but then I tried it, I put it on the figure, and I just realized that, I mean, it looked kind of cool, but when I was looking at the reference pictures, he really, his hair only kind of looks like that in the pre-Doc Ock stages. 
when he's Doc Ock, he has much more like a, of a shaggy kind of look to his hair, more disheveled look. So I thought the Harry Potter hair was uh, more fitting. So I just went with that in the end. And of course, like I said, that's painted brown. His face, like it says, the Harry Potter face, where I um, painted black over the glasses. So he's kind of wearing these uh, these circular sunglasses, just like in the film. I put some lines around his eyes and his mouth. You kind of you know just capture the likeness of the actor. Um, and then I painted his eyebrows brown, which is probably very hard to tell on camera, but um, I did it. <laughs> just saying it now, so my hard work doesn't go unnoticed. Um, his jacket was made out of uh, green construction paper. Uh, the showcase would have been out sooner, but I actually had to uh, go back and remake the jacket because as I was getting ready to do the showcase, I had a uh, dark gray one on him that I made way back when I first started these figures, back in like 2017. And then I was kind of looking at reference pictures and I was like, no, that looks more dark green. I should probably update it. <laughs> so I updated it, and I think it actually looks a lot better this time around. Um, I painted, it's very hard to tell, but I painted some brown buttons kind of going up the length of it right here and then on the side as well. And you see the black lapels and then just some more uh, line detailing on the sides right there. Um, and then I cut a hole in the back, or I stamped a hole in the back for the claws. We'll get to the claws in just a second. He's got black gloves on. If we kind of open up his jacket a little bit, focus in on his torso. He's got the claws, they're the pattern that kind of, um, the little brace that kind of goes around his stomach. Um, that's part of his claws. I thought about sculpting that on, because I originally painted it on when I first started these figures, and then when I went back to revise them, uh, just recently, I thought about sculpting it on instead. And I still could have, but, I don't know. I mean, I, I feel like it just would have been extra work, and it's being covered up by the jacket anyway, so you don't, you know, it, It'd be extra work that's really kind of going, for the most part, unnoticed. It would add added some some uh, depth to the character, I'll, I'll give it that. You know, it would add some nice depth and, uh, you know, 3D elements to him. But I'm happy with how it is now. Maybe I'll update in the future. Um, you can just see some more of his chest details painted on there as well. Um, just, you know, pretty standard. He's got, you know, skin tone painted on. He's shirtless. And then just some brown shoes. And then his claws were the, the standard Lego Doc Ock claws that I essentially uh, painted all silver. I kind of removed one of these little bracket pieces. You know, there's, I think, like like four of them in the official, or, um, or no, there's only two of them, and then the two, you know, end pieces. I think, yes, yeah, so there was two of these little middle pieces in the official LEGO set where I got the Dog Ock figure, and I just kind of removed one of them to f make him more in scale with the movie. Um, painted them all silver, even this little back brace part. I uh, took a one of those blue Technic pins one you know the ones that have you know one side has like you know the little X Technic pattern the other side has the little um, circular insert piece um, in the you know the blue ones I cut the circular insert piece off and glued it to the back of the torso so the claws can come off although I don't want to take them off right now um, because the um, you know it's, it's fragile but yeah the uh, the Technic piece does stay on the back of the figure um, and I can remove the claws. I painted just kind of everything, whoops, I painted everything just like in the silver color, just, you know, to kind of hide all the extra colors on there. Um, I, originally, I decided to update it and try a gunmetal color, so I painted one of the claws in the gunmetal, and I did not like the look of it at all. I thought it looked too dark. Um, it wasn't, it didn't really match the reference pictures I was using, so I just kind of went back on that decision and then uh, kept them all in the standard uh, traditional uh, silver that I originally painted them all in. And it's very, very hard to tell. I don't even know if it's going to come up on film or on the video. Um, but if you kind of look, I'll try to con I'll try to focus in on one of them. On the interior of the claws, I did paint a little uh, orange dot to kind of resemble the um, the uh, lights that were um, you know the lights that were kind of on the interior of the claws. Um, it, it didn't come out very well, or I mean, I mean, it came out fine. It's just such a such an, a detail, such a minuscule detail that it's very hard to notice. Um, but like I said, once again, I don't want my hard work to go for, to, you know, to go unnoticed. Um, I think if you kind of, if you kind of look at it in person, you can see them, but, um, yeah, just kind of look at it on video, it doesn't really show. Um, and I kind of have the claws in this pose, because I just, I like, it looks better than the traditional pose Lego has them in, where they're all kind of, you know, like, equally balanced, kind of like this, you know, I kind of like them coming out more like this, like they do in the movie. Um, but yeah, there's Doc Ock. I like the, like, tell me what you think of the claws, I like the look of them. I originally was going to use these. These are from this, uh, these Lego Junior sets that came out back in 20, 2004, I think. Um, I had, I originally had the set that these came in, but I sold them, so I had to reorder them. I kind of reordered them for nothing, because when I 
initially put them on the figure, I was going to paint them in silver and then put them on this figure, they were not to scale at all because I forgot the junior sets used these uh, kind of like Friends line. Uh, there was, the minifigures were almost like to the scale of the Lego Friends sets. And yeah, the claws, they would have looked cool, but they would have just completely overshadowed the figure because they were way too big. Um, so I just kind of went with these ones because they were more in scale and they let the figure do the talking more so than the claws. You know, I didn't want the claws to overshadow the figure. So yeah, I'm pretty proud of both these guys. Um, I hope you guys like them. Let me know what you think. And uh, yeah, let's close out this video right now. So there you have it, guys. There are my LEGO Spider-Man 2 custom painted minifigures. Uh, let me know what your thoughts on them are down in the comments. Tell me uh, what you think of the Raimi movies, what your favorite uh, superhero movie of all time is, or what your favorite iteration of Spider-Man has been so far. Um, I'd love to hear it. Um, I'm really proud of these guys. I think they're some of my best work or some of my most time-consuming work, at least. I'll say that. Um, but I'm very, very happy with all, all the line work came out in Spider-Man. I really like the look of the claws or the, the tentacles on Doc Ock. And overall, I just think these are two of uh, my uh, more unique figures because um, you guys know I don't really do superhero figures that often, despite how how much of a, how popular doing those are in um, in the Lego community. A lot of people tend to do MCU figures or DCEU figures. I tend to kind of stray away from that because I'm not a huge superhero fan, but if it's a movie like Spider-Man 2 that I'm passionate enough about, I will for sure uh, tackle projects like this because I love these original Raimi films and I wanted to commemorate them by making these figures. So I want you guys think down in the comments and I will see you in the next one. Peace out. Pizza time. And in this one we have my Lego Spider-Man 2 custom painted minifigures.